this is a warning. If you have any of the Amazon Echo devices, I would advise that if you have called it that name, put it on mute by pressing the mute button on the top of it because I may be saying the word quite a lot in this review. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. So today we're gonna to be unboxing the Echo Show 5, giving it a quick test and giving you my initial impressions on whether or not I think it's a device that you should be buying. But before we do, if you like today's video and you find it of any help at all, don't forget to return the favor and hit that like and subscribe button. So let's dive in. I've tried many Echo devices before, but this is the first one I've tried with a screen. It's quite a small device, at only 15 centimeters wide and 8.5 centimeters tall. Amazon themselves advertise it as a compact display that measures 5.5 inches, which is about the same size as your average phone screen. Its design is rather simple. On the front, it has a screen and a rather miserable one megapixel camera and on the back of the material covered case, a power port, micro USB port, and 3.5 mil audio output, with the top being reserved for mics, volume, and mute buttons. The display on paper is seemingly just as miserable as its camera. However, for a resolution of 960 by 480, I think they've worked some magic because it looks better than you'd expect. And of course, like all Echo devices, it has Alexa imprisoned inside of it. Remember to subscribe to Stu's Reviews, or I will find you and I will end you. So, first things first, let's get it out of the box. Now, to tell you something, I'm really excited to try one of these, because I haven't actually tried an Echo show before. As you know, I've tried many different Echo devices, and in fact, I tried all the last generation of the Echo speakers, which I'll leave a link in the description below, and I'll also leave a link there so you can check that out. But as some of you may have seen in that review, they didn't exactly set up very, very easy. So I'm keen to see if this is easier to set up. Doesn't work, <laughs> stupid setup. Amazon, if you're watching this, you've made it extremely complex to set up this. It really was a nightmare. Okay, right, packaging-wise, pretty straightforward. Typical blue Amazon Echo branding. Okay, it's quite a nice packaging. Open it up, and, ah! That is quite a dinky looking device. I like that. Okay, what else have we got in the box? We've got instructions, cardboard, and a plug, an integrated plug. Ah, now this is feedback straight away. Amazon have used this round type of power plug for all of their devices, which means you can't use standard USB cables quite annoying if you want to power it through something that isn't this let's say well this is 15 watt but let's say you wanted to plug it in through a usb hub that's powered or something you can't you've got to use a plug which could cause some problems for other people i mean a lot of amazon's echo devices can be powered via the usb but all of their new range seem to be using this round type which i don't particularly like anyway let's move on take off the wrapping and plug it in Okay, it's turning itself on, that's positive. It's good news. Let's give it a second or two. Okay, select language, English. Mm -hmm. Hello, ready for setup. Okay, searching for networks. Connect to the network. Okay, I've got to put my password in. <sighs> Device updates available. This could take about 10 minutes. Download and install. <sighs> Updating this device. I hate this. 
I wish there was a way for devices to be automatically updated already. I'll be back in a minute. The station you might like, 80s pop on Amazon Music. Yeah, it's all right, I know all this. Right, what else? Number two, come on, hurry up. Number three, choose your ideal... Oh, this is boring. Right, I'm going to skip, can I skip this? How do I skip this? Get started. Can I skip this? I can't skip this. Come on, there must be a way to skip this. Now we're up and running properly, let's give this a quick go. Alexa, what's the weather in Cardiff? In Cardiff, it's 18 degrees Celsius with mostly cloudy skies. Today's forecast calls for more of the same, with a high of 20 degrees and a low of 11 degrees. So one thing I would say is that screen looks great. It's really, really nice. Obviously, it's hard to show you exactly on camera how nice it is, but it is actually a very crisp display and quite colourful. Let's give it another go and see what else it can do. Alexa, set a timer for 10 seconds. 10 seconds, starting now. So again, it gives you that visualisation, which is really quite nice. Alexa, stop. So overall, actually, it's very responsive, quite quick. And what I really like is the fact it is a good visualization of everything going on with uh, these devices. That's something you don't get with the Echo speakers. Big question is, can I change this background and how do I do it? Okay, so there's a couple of just different designs that you can choose here. That seems to be quite a few different bits and bobs. What about classic? What's inside here? It's quite funky. Ah, now that is quite nice, quite like that. There seems to be quite a lot of customizability with this because you can choose the kind of base um, clock face out of a load of different options. I've gone for a kind of more classic uh, appearance, but then you can change things like the background within this. I am gonna go for, oh, I'm gonna go for that, that looks nicest. And then you can also change things like the clock face as well to be a slightly different style. This is quite cool. Uh, let's go for that. That's a bit more retro, isn't it? That'll do. That's quite cool. Uh, show date, show weather, and save. Right. There we go. Look at that. So that's pretty cool. There seems to be a lot of customization options available for uh, your face. But before we move on, there is one little thing that I want to show you, is this thing at the top. Now, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to turn the angle so you can see this a bit better. There's a camera up here. Now, there's a switch on top, this little switch here, that if you flick like this, it closes the camera. Now, that is a really, really nice little thing. There are lots of people out there who are wearing tinfoil hats, thinking that the government is watching them through their cameras all the time. And let's face it, they're probably right, those people. The government is, in fact, watching me all of the time. But this thing can stop them, at least stop them from seeing me, which is very, very nice. So when I'm in my nudie pants, I can flick that, and they can't see me running around stark naked. So that is a cool little addition to this. Now, there's one other thing I want to show you before we move on to the sound. Now, I've been using this for the past 24 hours, and I've discovered the Alexa app on here is actually pretty cool. So all you do to get access to the Alexa app is swipe from the very right-hand side, like this, and you can get access to everything that you can get access to on your smartphone, including video which gives you access to things like Amazon Prime uh, TV series and videos, which is really, really quite cool. So we tap on Prime Movies, and I get something up here. John Wick, tap it. One thing I have found is that it does take a little while to load it. Give it a moment or two. It's got this red bar because I've muted it. And let's go off that before I get copyright striked, which I indefinitely will. So if we go back, that's pretty cool. What else is in this app? Uh, we've also got things like Smart Home, so you have all of your routines, uh, all of your devices linked up in here, Kitchen Study. I mean, I can tap Study and you'll see it go off now. 
You saw that go off and I can tap it again. It comes back on. Uh, better still, I could do studio and that goes off. Everything goes off there. Tap it back on. All comes back on. So overall, this app is pretty cool. And it's just another good way of accessing all of your uh, Alexa sort of stuff within this one little display without having to go into a smart app. Now there's one last thing on this little bit that I want to talk about and that's the actual display itself. Now I mentioned that it does a very good job considering it's actually relatively low resolution. But one thing that is a big criticism is that it's not an IPS display. So when you move it from side to side, if I just go back to the home screen here, when you move it from side to side, it does darken quite a lot and doesn't become the nicest of displays. Which is a shame because head on, it looks beautiful. But when you look at it at a slight angle, it's not so nice. Maybe I'm just criticizing it and maybe they've not put something like an IPS display in because of the price point they've set it at, which I'll get onto shortly after the sound test. We've had a brief look at the overall software and so far I've been quite impressed and I like the customization of the different types of faces on the display itself. I think that that adds a nice little touch. But the real question is how well does this work in respect to sound? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pair this up via Bluetooth to play something from my phone that isn't copyright because I don't want to be demonetized like pretty much every other YouTuber at the moment. So let's pair it up. Now connected to iPhone. Fantastic, there we go. Right, okay, we're connected and ready to go. So let's go home. Good, good, good. And I'm going to play something from Epidemic Sound. I'm going to play a song by Oi, as usual, because I think they're a good band and they've got a good range for testing out speakers. So let's have a listen. I'm going to play it like this because this is the way you're supposed to listen to it. It's supposed to project out the back this way somehow. I don't know. So let's have a listen. Wow, that's really good for a small speaker. Oh, it's only half volume as well. Apparently this can go louder. Very good. Overall, that's quite nice. Not that strong on the bass. Very clear though. Right, let's give a different song a go and have a look. That is loud. I mean, that is very, very loud for the size of this speaker. And actually, the bass is not too bad. I'd say that if you go over about 75% on here, the sound does lose its clarity slightly on the bass side of things. I'd say the highs definitely take over a little bit when you put it past 75%, but up to that point, it does very well for such a small speaker. Very good sound overall across the board. I'd almost go as far as saying this is possibly slightly better than a single Echo Plus that I reviewed early this year. Right, let's stop that there. So far, so good. 
I've been genuinely impressed by the sound quality from this little speaker. It is probably better than quite a few of the smaller Echo devices I've tried. Echo Dot is a good device, but it's a little bit tinny. Does okay. Even the Echo Plus second gen, I wasn't that impressed by. I didn't think it was worth the premium label that Amazon gave to it. However, this is very good for the size. Very, 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 very good indeed. But the real question is, is it worth it? Now, here's the interesting bit, because the cost of this is at a very interesting price point. It sits at £79, which I think is a phenomenal price for this. I mean, let's have a quick look at all the other devices that they've got. So they've got the Echo Dot 3rd Gen, which is currently priced at £39.99, but is all the time £49.99, unless there's a sale. You know, that's 50 quid versus 80 quid. So it's only £30 more, and you're getting what I think is a better sound and a display, which means that you can do video calls, and it displays the information in a nice environment, and is a desk clock. So 30 quid, you're getting a hell of a lot more for your money. But let's have a look down here. You've got the Amazon Echo second gen speaker, which is 89 quid, and the Echo Plus second gen with a bulb for 139. How much is that on its own at the moment? Could you buy it on its own? Here we are. So yeah, on its own, still 139 pounds which is quite a lot more. Do you know what? I'd be very close to saying that this is one of my favourite Echo devices already. I just think it's priced at such a good point that it makes it completely, by far, the best competitor. No, it's not the biggest screen that they've got. I mean, they've got the Echo Show 2nd Gen here with a bigger screen. And no, it's not the biggest speaker they've got. You could buy an Echo, Echo Plus or a standard Echo second generation. They're bigger speakers. But actually, this is a very good speaker for the size. And like I said, it's got a display. So in my eyes, this is a very, very, very good entry to the Echo lineup. I love it. I really do like it. Overall, what can I say? My conclusion already is that this is a fantastic device. I mean, it's integrated itself into my network completely. And those of you that have Alexa devices will not be a stranger to how this operates. I mean, it works just like one of the Amazon Echo speakers, except you get a cool display that can do a bunch of different things. And it's just integrated itself so seamlessly to everything already. I mean, Alexa, turn off studio. Okay. As you can see, it immediately turns off all my studio lights. And in fact, it gives you then the option on screen to manually do it if you want to turn it back on. Which is cool. It's just another way of interacting with the Amazon Alexa voice service without having to use your voice for everything. And it just gives you a visualization of stuff that you're doing, which to me is great. And it comes in such a dinky package as well. It's smaller than the standard Echo Show. It's bigger than the Dot. And to me, it's a perfect size to sit on my desk. Or at the side of my bed. But it's going on my desk. And that concludes today's review. I know it was a brief overlook and a first opinion on the Echo Show. If there's anything else that I need to tell you about, I will do a catch-up review later on this month. But for now, can I say that I recommend this device? Initial impressions are absolutely. And that concludes today's review. Guys, a massive, massive shout out to all my current patrons. You guys are incredible. And if you want to become a patron of Stu's Reviews, head to my Patreon page in the description below. And I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.
Before you go, consider supporting me on my Patreon page by clicking here. It'll give you some great discounts on stuff I've reviewed and helps me to continue doing reviews. If you want to see some fun stuff, click here to see the highlights of Stu's reviews. And as a friendly reminder, click this button to subscribe.